and we well built this uh, part which is just using the face api to connect to the browser in part two what we're going to do is actually build a uh, max script so that you can take this data and use it inside of max to trigger all kinds of fun stuff um, to use this uh, what we need to do in max is use uh, npm and i'll show you how that works so max the new version of max actually has um, node.js integrated and that's what we're going to use here so i'm going to make a max patch that's in the same file as this face api thing that we just wrote and specifically i'm going to clean this up a little bit because i want all of these files to be in a specific um, subfolder so i'm going to make a new folder here called public and all of these files except for the public folder itself actually go inside of that folder and the reason why is because i want to be able to have the max patch here and then also a javascript file next to it so uh, saving this file uh, i'm going to save this in the face api and then call that uh, face api dot max patch and then i'm going to look at that in visual studio code so i have this face api max patch next to that i'm also going to make a new file face api.js that's going to contain my server um, and right now it's not going to do very much um, but uh, we can add to that later so the way that we can use um, node.js here is by using a uh, object called node.script and then have the name of that script so face api.js and now we can send all kinds of messages to that script so in our case what we can do is we can have a message saying script start and that's going to send this script start message to that node script now the script doesn't do anything um, so to make sure that we can see something happening the first thing that we can do here is to require the max api and the way that we do that is we can write const max api equals require max dash api so that's going to uh, start that api and here we can do for example post uh, saying hello from node.js so now uh, if all goes well if we click this script.start we can see hello from node.js so that's working here now it could also not work and the way that we can see if things go bad is we can actually add a new object here called node.debug it's going to open this massive thing here and we'll make it even more massive because it sometimes works better if you have lots of place and then we take this second output here and connect that here because that will actually tell us um, a message give us a message um, that looks something like this where it's saying like okay we're actually running this process something like this so this is what we want now because we are using uh, a bunch of elements here we also need a package.json file and normally this file will be initialized automatically this is kind of hard to do um, this way so we're going to make that file uh, ourselves so we're going to write package.json and package.json is a object that looks like this and has a bunch of uh, properties the first one uh, not all of them are required but we'll just add a few ones the first one is the name so face api then there's a version uh, we don't really care about the version so we'll set it to 000 um, then there's uh, whether that's private or not we don't really care about that uh, but we do care about the dependencies because this one depends on a couple of packages and i have npm open here the packages that we are depending on is uh, express so express is a web server a very frequently used web server um, this one uses version 4.17.1 4 so we're going to write here express version and then use a caret to indicate that it, it's almost the same version 4.17.1 uh, and then also another one that we're going to use is ws which is the websocket server and as you can see it's also trying to give me these things the reason why this auto completes here is because i have the um, npm intellisense uh, package so this one and this one and those allow me to just directly add these packages here okay so now we actually need to install them and because we are doing this from uh, max 
way that that works is we're going to add another message here. So I'm going to make a message block here saying script npm install. I'm going to send that message here. And what should happen if we control click on this one? So that's going to run npm install. And what we should see here in this folder is that we have these node modules folder that gets added and a package lock. So it's basically adding all of these packages uh, that we need. So this, this, is, um, this is good. This is what we are expecting. OK, so now we actually can get started writing our server. And to do that, we need a couple of things here. So we have the Max API already. We're also going to import Express. We're requiring uh, Express. We are also going to need WebSockets because that's the way that we are going to talk to the other part. Uh, so that's WS. Um, that's the one that we just installed. There's also a path that we need to make sure that we have relative paths. And then finally, we need HTTP because we're writing an HTTP server that will use both Express and WebSockets. So that one ties the two together. Um, so the first thing that we do is we're making an app using Express. And that app is going to uh, use um, express.static to actually serve everything from this public folder that we just made. So we're going to say path.join, take the current folder, the domain, and then add public to that. So everything from that public folder will be served. And specifically, we also want to serve a slash, so the first URL uh, that we connect to. And here we're going to send our file over. So this is our index.html file. That's the file that we specified. And the file comes from the um, this uh, public folder. So maybe we can say uh, public dir equals this one. Take that out. Uh, got a bracket. Public dir. And then put that here. And then here we're also going to say public dir. So it's going to send that file over. Um, and then we can actually use WebSockets um, in a minute. But first, let's try app.listen. Uh, so we can listen to a port here. And then we can say um, uh, server started. Now, we want to lock this event. Uh, normally, we use console.lock, but we don't see these events. So instead, we need to use maxapi.post like we have here. But it's nice to have console log as well. So I'm going to make a new function that's just called log. And what that function is going to do is it's going to do console log with all of the arguments like this. And then also it's going to use max api.post. So we can see our uh, log statements both in max and um, in, so in the max console as well as in the console log. So now we can say log uh, server started at HTTP localhost 8080. And we'll get rid of that statement. So we save. And normally, if we click here, it says server started at localhost 8080. So now, if we open our browser uh, and go to that port 8080, uh, we should see our index.html file. And as you can see, it's already running. So we have our, um, our uh, web browser here. And normally, it should also load all of these models here. So that's cool because it's. It's serving everything from the public folder that works. We see our index.html, so all of these things just work, uh, which is really nice. Um, and then finally, to actually make this connection between the two, we actually have to upgrade our Express server to a WebSocket server. And the way that we do this is we say const server equals HTTP create server. So we're creating a server around our app. This is what actually happens here, uh, but we're going to replace this part with server.listen. Um, and the reason why, because we can then take that server and actually turn that into a WebSocket server as well. So now we can say WebSocket.server on port uh, 7474, because we'll use this number later. It's just a random number, but we can use it later. And now we can say, well, whenever there is a connection on that WebSocket server, we're going to take that and then uh, do something with that connection. So uh, whenever we have a message, so a message comes into that connection, we take the message. And then uh, what we're going to do right now, and actually uh, later as well, is we can just uh, log that message. So log message. 
right? And then the rest all stays the same. Now, this starts a WebSocket server, but our file here, our uh, expressions, JS doesn't actually do anything. It doesn't open this WebSocket server. So we need to change this code as well so that whenever we um, open a connection that we can actually see it here. So we're going to make a WebSocket uh, client. So it's going to listen to WebSocket. Note that in the browser, we don't have to import uh, anything. It's already, or require anything, it's already included. So to that same port, 7474, and this is just going to be a very, very basic WebSocket server because all we are going to do is we are going to assume that this works and that it's opening. And then whenever we have results, we draw them. And then we also say send over all the expressions. And because WebSocket can only work with strings, we're doing JSON stringify um, results.expressions. So it's going to send over all of these expressions. Um, so what do we need to do? We can look at this web page. We can restart our server here um, and try to get everything on the same page so you can see. So I'm going to restart uh, my server here. So server started, refresh my page here. And then if all goes well, all of the events that happen here. So whenever it detects a face in a minute, it's going to send over these messages. So we see neutral, happy, sad and so forth. All is log statements. Cool. So this is happening in the log statement, but that's not very useful. What we actually want to happen is that we uh, want to be able to get this as an outlet. So we're going to go back to our um, face API here. And instead of logging this as a message, we're going to say um, max API dot outlet. And then we're going to take that message, which was sent as a string, and parse that out as a message. And this is very convenient because um, this turns it into a dictionary, which is built into Max. So now if we start the script over again, um, note that it, now it says script is closing here because this WebSocket is no longer working. It has crashed the moment or it's closed the moment that we actually have this server uh, restarted. So now this actually gets these events. We don't really see them, but it's getting these events here. And out here comes a dictionary. And the way that we can catch this dictionary, view this dictionary, is using a, um, a new object called dict.view. And that shows the contents of this dictionary. So connecting that here, we can see all of these uh, emotions rolling in. So neutral, happy, sad, and so forth. So this is already really useful. The next step, though, is to have is to take one of these emotions and to unpack it and we can do that using dicta unpack so now we can say okay let's take um, only the happy emotion for example we can add a bunch more so we can also say sad and angry and for each of those it's going to make an outlet as you can see here so we connect this here and now this is going to be the value of happy value of sad and angry and we can do something with that value so for example we can add a very simple greater than value and say whenever this value is greater than 0 0.8 then I want something to happen so in this case let's add a toggle here um, and so now if we connect it here and we're happy <laughs> now we can see that we have this checkbox no longer happy no checkbox and so this can of course go to a bunch of stuff but this is the main setup that you would be using um, so there's a bunch of moving parts I'll link to all of to a github repo that contains everything in the description but this is uh, enough to get you started, hopefully, using face detection and max.